Hey guys, here's a video on how to solder, at least the basics anyways. This is some of the stuff you'll need. Soldering gun or soldering iron. I like to use a soldering gun. This is a Weller, 140 or 100 watts. You squeeze the trigger halfway and it's 140 and all the way is 100. And that's for different size wires and stuff. And you need whatever you're going to be soldering. And of course your solder. Now this is rosin core 6040, 10 lead. Uh, get it at Radio Shack. This is like five bucks. Now for the basic electronic stuff, make sure you get rosin core solder. If you get standard acid core solder, you will have to buy flux, and that's generally used when sweating copper pipes and stuff like that. Now I prefer to use a little vise like this, and this is a alligator clip to hold whatever it is you're soldering. It makes it easier. You can see this has got hot quite a few times. Uh, I use it to repair guitar cords a lot. So like I'm always wearing out guitar cords, and it's cheaper to fix them than it is to replace them all the time. So. And if you get into doing bigger soldering, bigger wire, this is number six copper. This is the same type of wire I used in my latest Jacob's Ladder video. If you ever have to solder this big stuff, anything this size, around this size, you probably have to use a propane torch and because it gets a lot hotter and you probably burn your soldering gun up or soldering iron trying to trying to solder this so I wouldn't recommend trying it and later on in the video after I show you how to solder basic electronic parts I'm going to uh, demonstrate how you would do some splicing for general wire splicing anyways it's best to tend your uh, uh, wire or something small like this you don't have to but what tanning means is get the wire hot and melting some solder on here on both parts and then twist it together and just heat it up and you usually don't have to apply any more solder but for something small like this I usually just melt the solder directly on the components now there's several different ways you can do it you can put them beside beside each other like this and just get them hot and melt the solder or get them like this and just twist them together which is just what you, most people do like that zoom in so you can see it get it good together so it's nice and solid and this also serves as a heat sink to keep your components from getting too hot mainly in the case of capacitors or transistors these are resistors your standard uh, I think are quarter or half watt resistors. Now I'm going to take some solder. Go ahead and get this one. See, this one's got a light on it. Helps you see. You go ahead and melt a little bit of solder on here. And it's best to wipe it off. I already did that earlier to keep your tip clean with a moist rag. And it's got to start moving on me. Clamp it up here. There we go. Just give you an idea of how to do it. A lot of people melt all your solder on here and just try to stick it on there. That don't work. What you gotta do, you gotta get your tip. When you can melt solder on your tip, it's hot enough to begin soldering. Get it on there like that. Then you melt your, you touch your solder on your actual wiring like that. That's it. Now if it stays shiny, you got a good solder joint. If it turns like a uh, if it gets grayish with no shine at all color to it it's usually what they call a cold solder joint and usually won't hold it's probably hot still but that's a pretty good joint right there because it's still shiny you can see uh, and that's about it for doing electronic components uh, I'll do it again just to show you again Let me twist these other sides together here put these Resistors in parallel. <laughs> Don't really need them anyway. I got like a hundred of them. More than that, really. And again, what you'll do, let me get that over here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little easier. As far as my camera zoom, it looks like it's a little out of focus. Anyway, 
once again and get your like a melt solder on it so it's hot enough put that on there like that and touch your solder on the wire like it let it flow out real good and take it away take everything away let it cool down that looks pretty good it dulled just a little bit if it dulls a little bit it's all right you don't want it a whole lot now I'm going to show you how you do splicing on bigger wires this is an old technique it's not used very much anymore like I want to splice these two wires together instead of just twisting them let me zoom back out instead of just twisting them together like I did on the resistors what a lot of, the, uh, I get it out back in the old days when they had telegraphs they did what they called a Western Union splice I'm going to try to do it here I always hold a pair of pliers on here like this if it'll cooperate with me <laughs> and bend the wire wrap this one around like this I'm not going to actually solder this one I'm just going to show you how you do your basic connection here then you do the same with this one switch hands here it's hard to do stuff in front of a camera and you just twist them because you want to try to get these pretty close together like this this is what they used to use on the old telegraph wires it looks like that when you get done kind of like barbed wire in a way then you just get it hot and melt all your solder in there and you can't hardly pull them apart and it's a real good connection as far as electric it's a good electrical connection and it's pretty strong too so uh, that's that's how you do a western union splice so well i guess that's about it y'all got any questions answer me or I mean answer me ask me and i'll try to get back to you uh thanks for watching